let me talk about what's going on with Robin Hood. And before I do, I would like to show you guys how my daughter got me hung up. <laughs> my daughter got <laughs> me hung up in an option that I didn't plan on doing, and it's called buying a call. And the difference between buying a call and selling a put, when you do a put, let me just put this on the screen real quick. When you do a put, ladies and gentlemen, you are securing a whole contract of stock, which is 100 shares or whatever the stock may be. And you are basically saying that you don't think that the stock price is going to drop below what you do as a strike price. That's a put. The distant but close cousin to that is buying a call. And this is my second time doing this. And what I did was today, and this is all the data right here. I bought a whole contract of PayPal at a strike price of $225. That cost me $445. One of the differences between buying a call and selling a put, I could lose this $445 because I did an expiration date of this Friday. Whenever you are buying calls, you want to set your expiration date as far as possible so that the stock has time to possibly drop and go back up. Now, I'm not worried about that with PayPal because they're on a they're on a tear. Today was not a good day in the market, and they went up. And look at my gain. I made $158 just by buying this call. The market value is 603 right now. That's the difference. So when you buy a call and you pick a certain strike price, you're going to get a full contract and you're going to get the difference between the market value of the contract you bought versus what it is now. So I'm in the good 150 already and I'm hoping it goes up some more tonight. Um, when you do decide to buy a call, if this thing doesn't get to your price point and it expires, you lose whatever money you put down. So for me, I would lose 445. The difference between this and you selling a put you're not going to necessarily lose your money when you're selling a put, but you're going to be stuck with the stock and you have to wait for the stock to either go back to the price that you bought it at, I mean, that you got stuck with it at, or you turn around and sell calls. So what a lot of these day trading dudes do, they see where the momentum is going and they buy like four or five contracts or something like this. So, you know, they, if I would have bought five contracts of this, you multiply that 158 by five and I could have got yeah. out today. Mm. And so that's one thing that's going on in my um, portfolio. And the other thing that I did today that I told Larry about, and let me get to my homepage. I came down here and I bought one reopening stock called bookings.com. They do price line. They do um, open table. And here it is right here. I bought one share of this. And the reason why I bought, I bought it is because look at this. Look at this, this history. In a week, they went up $19. In a month, it went up $37. Three months, it went up $300. Bucks. And in a year, it's going up $115. The main reason I bought it is because I'm going to be selling secure puts on this stock. And the reason why is when you come in here and you look at this premium, ladies and gentlemen, this premium is unbelievable. Um, this is a step before I decide to do Amazon puts. So the premium on this thing, if I were to do, let's say I pick this number, this strike price of 2,090 bucks, they're paying $1,840 for two days. Wow. If, I was, mm. if I was to do this out for a week, let's say I wanted to do it till next Thursday. Let's take a look at what they'll pay you. <clears throat> You're going to get paid basically $4,000 if I want to extend this to next Thursday. This wow. is the power of the stock market, ladies and gentlemen. This is why if you've got idle cash sitting around, take that idle cash and do options on quality stocks such as Booking, such as Amazon, such as Chipotle. They pay you fat daddy premiums. And people like me today, what I did, I bought, the, I bought a call, which was the premium that this person right here would be getting paid. So that's what happened with me today. In um, in my stock story, the next thing that's going on, oh, ladies that was and good. Larry sent this to me today, and I said, "Man, here we go with them old school dudes." <laughs> <laughs> the Massachusetts regulators are filing a complaint against Robinhood 
And here's the story right here. The accusation from Massachusetts Center on the tactics that the company uses to keep customers engaged, claiming that it encourages customers to use the platform constantly through what it calls gamification. Ladies and gentlemen, why is it that people like them get to make up words? And I'll keep going. The complaint alleges that through the promise of free stock, push notifications, and the signature digital confetti, Robinhood encourages continuous and repeated engagement with its application. State regulators allege Robinhood allowed one customer with no investment experience to make more than 12,700 trades in over six months. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what the fuck is that about? I mean, for real, what the hell? Is <laughs> you can do the same thing on any of the other trading platforms. Me and Larry will tell you what this is about. This is about the big boys are upset that Robin Hood is allowing people to do trades absolutely free. And the momentum has been so yeah. huge with Robin Hood this year. They are about to go IPO next year. Now, this one idiot that lost all his money during all these trades, I did some digging. I found out that his family is rich and they're in bed with the Massachusetts legislatures. And yeah. not to mention, a couple of your financial institutes are housed in the Boston area. Um, you've got a JP Morgan up there. You've got um, Chase Bank up there. None of them want to see Robin Hood make this push because it takes money out of their pocket. Having said those things, Larry, I give it to you. Well, <clears throat> of course. two things. One, if you made 160, what what they say? The dude made 167 uh, trades or 167,000 trades. What was, what what was it? Twelve thousand and seven hundred. So, well, do I mean you make that many trades in that short of time? You're experienced at that point. You basically yeah. have decided you were going to become experienced in a very short period of time, and. But I will say this, though, about some of the other brokerages, because I have an account at Robinhood, also at TD and at Schwab, and some of the other brokerages put guardrails on your account. So, like, there are some things if you go and day trade with uh, if you go and day trade with TD mm -hmm. and you haven't been and you haven't had an open account with them very long or you haven't made a certain number of trades or you have don't have a certain amount of money in your account. Mm -hmm. They will send you a they will send you a message at the end of the trading day telling you, you know, that that what you did was day trading. And if you are going to day trade on the platform, you need to have either made a certain number of trades or you need to have a certain amount of money in their account in your account. OK, or you so that, have, you that, have brings your, me, that brings me to Robin Hood does the same exact thing. Next question. Well, if that's the case, you know, and. I mean, they do the same thing as far as like with options. They make sure that, you know, they don't just give you like when I opened up my Rob, my, my Robinhood account, I think I filled off a couple check boxes and they were like, cool, you're approved for options. And I, I don't feel like it's that easy with with TD and Schwab. I feel like you need to go in and and you have to have a certain amount of money in your account. And then you have to have then you have to actually request to be able to trade options and you have to. And I think you have to have your account open for a period of time or something. There, there, are, there are some other requirements. They, I feel so like they, I, I feel got, like they I, do have a few just, more guardrails. I just got a TD account, and they didn't require me to do none of that. The only thing they asked me to have is three thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe they changed some stuff. Yeah, so, there. And and let me tell no. you about Robin Hood, because I know the rules with Robin Hood like it's the back of my hand. If you have less than twenty five thousand dollars in your account, you can't do. You can't do um, day trading, period, period. You get four tries at day trading, then they would not only do they send you a message, but they suspend your use of the account. The only thing you can do is withdraw your money if you get caught day trading under 25000 in your account. So, so you can't I, round trip something? What'd you say? So you can't round trip something? Let's just say you bought a... You know, let's say you got in on an IPO in the in the morning time, and it was at like fifty dollars. And then you and, and at three o'clock, it's up to two fifty. You can't pull your profits because they'll consider yeah, it day trading. You can you if it's if it, they give you four of those if your account is under twenty five grand. 
You can pull wow. your profit on the fourth one, yes. So whatever whatever action you started on number four, you can you can finish that action. But after mm. that, your your account is suspended. Only thing you can do is withdraw your money and add money to the account. That's it. So what do they consider day trade? I mean, can you sell if you so buy what, today and sell tomorrow? Do they still consider yeah. it a day trade? No, that's not a day trade. You could buy right. it today. So what it exactly tomorrow. are they? What, what exactly is the uh, legislature trying to accomplish? With uh, what what exactly are they trying to accomplish? Are they trying to regulate it a little bit more, or make them? Uh, what kind of changes are they actually trying to trying to get them to make? If it's you know if it's something that's uh, you know the you know if they already have their own rules set in you know rules set in place uh um, what are, what are what they, they actually pushing for they trying to take more money out of their pocket the same way they've done all the other tech companies robin hood just got finished paying taxes or somebody 1.2 million dollars because they tried to say that they are making investing too easy i can't make this stuff up they literally said in the <laughs> legislation you made investing too easy in Texas. So to settle this situation, Robinhood wound up paying $1.2 million when in the beginning they was trying to hit him in the head for like, it was somewhere like $200 million, something stupid like that. Mm. So what I, and, and Robinhood made the same claim I would have made if I was legislating for them. So you guys are willing to say that if someone has Fifty thousand dollars versus the man that have five hundred. That fifty thousand gives him quote unquote experience. No, mm. no, no, no. For all you know, this brother with the five hundred dollars could have been paper trading somewhere else. You don't know that right. man's experience. But but mm. most of these brokerages, pretty much all of them, if you have X Y Z amount of dollars, they say you they give you the privileges of someone who's ex experienced. And it's and like Robin Hood said in their last litigation, that's bogus. But we put it in there because we see yeah. all the other brokerages using that as a way to self-regulate. So in all honesty, T streams, right. all this is is a cabal of the people running these old brokerages upset at the momentum of Robin Hood because their Robin Hood has added in one year. I, I mean, literally in one year. 20 million new accounts in a year in a year yeah yeah and that's what it's that's all a lot about of damn money it's that's a lot money. of money on their books and because they they think that yeah, i'm such a nice guy they sent me this and let me show you what's in here yeah they sent a brother some socks you're nice guy. They, they sent a brother <laughs> some socks okay i like that and and they sent a brother this is a charger, a wireless charger for any oh, nice. cell phone. Yeah, man. Nice. And then they even said, hold up. Let me get this camera angle right. They even said, thank you, Lamont. This thing says, thank you, Lamont, for all you've done for the Robin Hood team. You are a gold member. Make sure you stick around for what's to come. And Larry, get this. You know how me and you have been complaining about we want the private investor rate for IPOs? Right. You getting it. Oh, they're going to allow you to do that, huh? They're going to allow us to do it. 